Continentex 211 Educating the youths through films I've been absorbing the situation that has been happening in South Sudan like watching our brothers and sisters slaying themselves over cows and killing of innocent people in bull area and then the young people from the bull retaliating and going to war up so i just want to say something and if you're from bull nowhere or you're nas from bull or you're jeng from war up or dinka war up this is my message for you um for those so we're gonna pass a little bit of time i just want to share what my perspective is i've been sitting on it for a couple of days it's been uh disturbing me and bothering me and i wanted to give a comment about it and also you can leave your comment what you think if you get pissed off but what i'm doing also you can also put it down there Now they say that do not shit or poop on the plate you find your food from you know I want to retreat this and for the nuer from bull or nas of bull let me tell you one thing a lot of nuer people are pissed off about you really pissed off a lot of them and there's a big talk and they're really pissed off some of them call you names they call you nuer well yes and they say the downfall and the suffering of all nas people now is because of bull now that's that's what the nuer collective people are saying in their agreement and if they had an opportunity or they had the power or they have the guns and they have everything possible you nuer will the bull nuer you'd be crushed easily but coolest thing is you're fortunate you have power you can protect yourself you have guns your food and you have it and the same thing to war up the jeng from war up god has trusted you you have been given the power you know the power is you have it and you have a great partnership with the bulnwe so both of you from two different tribes have identified how both of you can work collaboratively to benefit from the resources so i'll look at it as you've been trusted by god to lead the nation there have been so many challenges but you've both succeeded to keep this partnership so when they say there is war between nuer and dinka that's not true because the dinka and nuer people in the government that have a partnership they've managed to stand together strong so jeng from warap let me tell you something all other jeng combined put together if they only had one opportunity and they had the power they will cut you all into pieces because they're saying since john garang has gone and kir took the power south sudan is in a mess you know and you know if you hear about galwa mongwel the stories they used to say like long time ago galwa mongwel or malwal gernyang a chamkoch now the people are saying no it's not malwal gernyang a chamkoch a koj warap ke a chamkoch now you have to understand that's how every other Dinka is like that. So now I want to tell you there are forces right now that are working to break this partnership between the bull and the people of Warab. There are forces. People are actually celebrating toxing their cup of tea that you're slaughtering each other because they understand one thing. As you slaughter each other, silver care become weak, the 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 nuer bull become pissed off with the jeng and then what happen the partnership breaks so somebody else will take that opportunity there are people right now strategically working to make you guys slaughter each other there's nothing in the whole world i've ever heard that people who have a great partnership that have been trusted with something you found something that work but you're destroying it that's to me i, I don't want to level name but i just want you all to think this clearly think about it this clearly how 
This is the power. And you're playing with the power right now. Because your minds have lacked the capacity to use this power and actually build South Sudan and take it to the next level. But now you're fighting over cows. But not only over cows. There are people from Warab area that has got grievances, historical grievances of the long history of the past of our ancestors used to kill ourselves. Now, now there's some intellectual gen. Let me tell you, the people of Warab, there's what is called the gen elders. But no, the worst people are those who have gone to school. These intellectuals, they have discussion that, oh, now that we have the power, we can claim the land that was taken a long time ago from ancestors by the Nuer. So now they mobilize, they train battalions in Warap area. As, as Salfakir struggled to keep himself in the power, you have these people who disobey and run armed. Now, if you guys don't understand, one of the most disrespectful people thing happened in Bull area. There's a, there's a, a, a prophet or a, a person that is respectable, res, is revered by all Nuer people. His name is Gadam. So, even self care, Dr. Machar, even though there's war, this man is a man of peace. He's not a prophet of war that he won't anyone die. He valued everybody. It's called Gadang. And if you talk about Gadang, if you start it, Gadang means, you no, know, there's a Dinka god called Deng. But this man is called Gadang. You understand? So, this guy, this man is a bridge. He's not involved in the politics in the war. In fact, if you're going to his place, and you're full of sins, or you've just killed somebody, he will faint. He will absorb your sins. So when you have your sins, he will just collapse on the ground because of how horrible you are. So how people do is, when you go into Gadang's place, you have to cleanse yourself. So there has to be a spiritual cleansing before you meet him. Either one of you is going to have a terrible thing happening. But most of the cases, he absorbed the situation. So now what happened is, Recently, the boys from Arabs and fully armed, they had RPK and they had RPGs. There was this like they're coming. It wasn't like coming to come the car. They attacked this man. A whole RPG was dropped in his where he sleep. That's the most insane thing. Like you're attacking a peaceful man. And now, luckily, nobody even know. How he survived because everybody started crying, oh, God dang, died, God dang, died. Now, the young people were not being controlled. So, what did they do? Because some children got killed in the crossfire, they decided they're going to go to war up and invade and kill. So, imagine revenge. When you hurt somebody, we are kind of like emotional people. You hurt me, ah, you fight, you go on revenge. So, now you get like the war up and the nuer, we from bull are killing each other. And they're the one that have been trusted with the power right now. You've been trusted with the power right now. And this power you've been trusted with is the plate to which your food is coming from. And now you're shitting over it. Just think about it. You're shitting over it. Now you're giving, now you shit over it right now. You're giving opportunity for another person to rise because you're destroying your power right now. Now, and me, why am I saying this? Because no death is important. The most important thing is, now that you've been trusted with power, you just need to rise in your thinking, in your planning. Your heart has to get bigger. You have to accommodate not all the historical stuff to kill each other. Now, let me go back to the point that the Jing elders right now, even though they've been trusted with the power, they still have the old fears a long time ago, about land. Now, the young men who invaded Bull area, their intention, they were trying to use a strategic intention. They said, like, if you kill a prophet, a spiritual person, then that's how you weaken those people. Luckily, this man survived. But what did they really want is the land. There's a place called Moyom, and there's other areas close to it. So because now they have power and they think God's carries on power, they can now use this power to take that land. And I think like historical stuff has to be forgotten. Now, people of Warab, bull are your greatest ally. 
They are your greatest allies. Seriously, realistically, if bull today, all the bull, the youth bull decides today that to hell and they decide today we are done with care, the government is over. Yeah, they're done. There's no way care will be able to stand. Because they have the army, they have the weapons, they have the contacts, they can ally themselves with the Arab, they're in the areas of the oil. Let's say they decide today, hey, we are done, we're not going to be part of Kir. Then where's Kir going to go? Kir will collapse. If Kir collapses, another person takes the opportunity. And that's what is called strategy. There are people inside South Sudan right now that are strategizing to break this partnership you both have. This partnership is... This partnership has brought peace. Now, peace, because of that, now there's a settlement. Dr. Machar is in the country. And when Dr. Machar is now in the country, there's a bit of stability. Now, what I'm saying is what we should all be thinking as South Sudan is right now, where we should all spend our all energy, is to make sure that this peace works. Not because we like the leaders. Not because they are our best choice, but in terms of expanding our mind to think beyond just these little challenges. The biggest trouble we have now is every South Sudanese want to be a president. If everybody, even the watchman, even the soldier fighting in the battlefield, there's that ego of every person think the position is this. So we've been programmed to think differently. So I want, I want to ask you, wherever you are, Bull Nuer or Nuer from whatever area or Jim or whatever or any South Sudan, what I'm asking is let's think about the bigger picture. Let's spend all our energy to make sure the peace Dr. Machar and Kira has brought to happen. Not because we love them, but so that our country can have peace. There can be stability. So that the civilians can go back home and grow their own crops. They can go home, take care of their cows. They can go back and dig the land. They can go back and get their dignity. Now, there's a bigger, bigger strategic plan outside, which I want to share with you. There's something called grand strategy. And grand strategy is nations from other nations to identify what countries that they have uh, those countries that could be able to beat them economically. Because the power is, the more strong the economy of your country is, the more power you get. Now, what Kira and Machar need to think is not how to kill themselves. It's how to make South Sudan as a collective powerful. And what Grand Strategy says, if we want the resources in that country, what we have to do is create a situation that the people of that country not to be united, but to kill themselves so we can loot their resources. Now, our country has got natural resources that has not been explored. Can you imagine? We have species that has not been explored. Some, certain animals that are in our country that do not exist in any other country. Can you imagine? There are certain species in South Sudan that are not anywhere. Then we have tons, tons of, of minerals. Right now, South Sudan is, people know about Congo, but in this battle that South Sudan is killing each other, there are planes that are flying in in different parts of South Sudan that are looting our resources. And our people are not in shock. We're engaged in killing ourselves and only focusing on the oil. There is some bigger stuff down there. We have diamond. We have gold. There's a man who introduced to me a mineral I've never heard in myself called topaz. I've never heard there's a mineral called topaz. It's a mineral called topaz. I've never heard that. It exists in South Sudan. But now, some people come in with plane and they steal them and though. So now, the wealth that we have, we're not inheriting it because People want us to hate ourselves. They want us to kill each other. So right now, I am just calling on, on those who said they are enlightened, those who have gone to school, that are educated, you know. I want to share a story I heard a man share with me, that there was this successful rich man who decided to take his donkey to university because he said, if my donkey could go to university to be trained, 
then my donkey could be different. So he went to a university and talked to the owners of the university. Hey, I would like my donkey to attend classes. The union said, no, he hasn't graduated. He hasn't gone to other classes. He said, look, I just want to, my donkey to attend the classes. I want to see what will happen in the end with my donkey after coming, graduating in university. So they gave him the bill. The university fees for the donkey was paid. You know, the donkey was taken to class every day. Now, when the graduation came, that man brought his family and every person and his friend that my donkey is going to graduate. They were so excited. Now, the man was given a bill to say like, in this, for you to get the certificate for graduation, we have to tell you about your donkey before he goes up on the platform. Imagine a donkey going on a plot pulpit and everybody's attention is on the donkey that has been dressed and is, the donkey is going to receive the, uh, the, the certificate. So what happened with the donkey is, it's so funny. The man said a report. They said, from the day we brought your donkey to our class, it started shitting and pooping in the library. Up to today now that we're giving your donkey this degree, the donkey is pooping. And then the owner looked, the, don oh, 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 oh. the donkey steal a donkey. Now, I was saying like, what this means is, it doesn't matter what degree you have, if you've gone or you've studied in school, or it doesn't matter if you don't have that common sense, that wisdom in you, because education is supposed to enlighten you, you know? It's supposed, if you have gone to primary school, if you can be able to read, that little wisdom that you have is what education can enlighten to make other people better. So as South Sudanese right now, some of you have come to the West, but still you're so tribal and breaking the country down. You're calling yourself enlightened. How enlightened are you? When what you have learned is not bringing value unto you, let me give you for an example. I I am a university or a school dropout, yeah, because I couldn't continue my education because I couldn't afford it. I became a recording artist not because I wanted to be a recording artist, but as a tool that I can use to to spread the message. But my greatest income does not come from the music. My greatest income comes from motivation, where I get hired to train leaders. Can you imagine? I train leaders, executives of companies, you know, people in the governments, politicians would gather and I train them how to become leaders. How on earth would I do that? Because I have gathered wisdom and I have read, and this is what pay my bills in COVID time. This is where I get my biggest return, not music. So he says, oh, girl, get his money. No, music is part of my, I love doing it, but it's part of the things I'm good. My biggest income come from the knowledge, little knowledge I gather. Some of you are more educated with me, but I use wisdom. So it doesn't matter what you have learned. And if you don't have wisdom, you're going to poop on where your food come from. So to my brothers from Warap and my brothers from bull. God has trusted you with this power. There's so many challenges that's come to take this power off you, but you have it right now. What I'm asking you, use wisdom. Don't be like this donkey that went to university and came as donkey pooping everywhere. Don't be like a pig that poop where it's eat. You have the power, both of you. I'm asking you, if you're from Warap area, or you're from Boulevard, reach out to talk to each other and let this be the end. No more raiding each other's cow, but thinking bigger on how, right now, how you can both lead South Sudan in a positive way. <laughs>